Hi everyone, let's talk about how atoms come together to form molecules. Well, before we get started with that, let's break down the periodic table into two groups, the metals and the nonmetals. Okay, on our periodic tables that we'll see on the exam, I've already darkened the line that separates the metals from the nonmetals. So it's right here. This diagonal staircase separates the metals, it's over here on the left, from the nonmetals on the right. Now the one exception is hydrogen. That's a nonmetal. And so on the exam, you'll see the, that the hydrogen is physically detached from the rest of the periodic table. It's kind of floating because it's a gas, not a metal. In fact, on some older periodic tables, hydrogen is actually located on the right-hand side, right here next to helium. Now the last column of the periodic table contains the noble gases. That's this column right here. And it turns out that noble gases are really special. It's a good name, noble, means, you know, nobility, majestic, something special. And it turns out those atoms have their outermost shell filled with electrons. They're incredibly stable. They rarely form bonds. They usually exist as single atoms. However, the rest of the elements on the periodic table, they don't have their outer shell filled with electrons. So what they want to do is to form bonds in order to get the same number of electrons as the noble gases, so that in that way, their outermost shell can be full, full of electrons too. Okay, turns out that there's two types of bonds. There's something called ionic bonding and something different called covalent bonding. Let's look at ionic bonding first. Well, we just broke down the periodic table in two groups, metals and nonmetals. When a metal atom and a nonmetal atom come together, they form an ionic bond. Quick little definition here. Ions are atoms with different numbers of protons and, and electrons. So they're going to have a net charge. They either have more electrons than protons, so they'll be negative. Electrons are negative. You have more of them, they're negative. Or they're going to have fewer electrons than protons, and then they'll be positive. So in order to form an ionic bond, it begins with the nonmetal gaining some electrons. Electrons are negative. So now that atom has a net negative charge. And a negative ion is called an anion. However, the metal atom, that one's going to lose electrons. And so now it's short on electrons, which means it has more protons than electrons. It is now positive, a positive ion. And that's called a cation. I know, it looks like cation, but we pronounce it cation. And to help you remember that, here's a little humor. These ions then form ionic bonds, and they do that in order to balance out or neutralize their charge. Let's do an example. Table salt has a chemical formula NaCl. So that's an ionic compound because we take a metal atom, sodium's on the left, and we take a non-metal chlorine on the right, and they stick together through an ionic bond. What's happening is that chlorine is saying, hey, I have 17 protons, right, the atomic number, atomic number, number of protons, 17, and normally in an atom, there's an equal number of electrons as protons. So chlorine starts out with 17 electrons, but then says, hey, I'd like to have my outermost shell filled like argon, which has 18 electrons. So it needs one more electron, and it's going to gain one more electron to have 18, just like argon. But it's not argon, right? The type of atom it is, is determined by the number of protons. So it's still chlorine, but it has a net negative charge because it has an extra electron. Sodium, sodium's thinking the same thing. It's envious of neon. Neon has 10 electrons. That fills its shell. Sodium says, ah, I got one extra electron than sodium. Sorry, than neon. I am sodium. I have 11 electrons. I would like to have 10. So it kicks out an electron lose an electron. So Na will then lose an electron. So it's short an electron. It now has a net positive charge. Kick down an electron. Where'd that electron go? It went to chlorine. And now the sodium is now a cation, positive ion. Positive ion. And then one sodium pairs up with one chlorine, a plus one and a minus one ion, then cancel out the charge. And you get table salt, NaCl. Okay, why don't you take a few minutes, pause the recording, and try this out. Here's a couple pairs of atoms. 
and NACL is up here again. We'll do that real quick for you before you get started on the others. And we also have the pairing of NaN oxygen, magnesium oxygen, aluminum and oxygen. And what I would like you to do is predict the chemical formula. There's just one chemical formula using the correct number of atoms of each element so that they form ions and cancel out the charge. Looking at sodium chlorine, well, it begins by finding them on the periodic table. Na is right here, has 11 electrons. It's a metal, the metals lose, lose electrons. So lose an electron, how many electrons? So it can get to the nearest noble gas, in this case, 10 electrons that neon has. So Na wants to lose an electron, lose an electron, now it's a cation. It's paired up with chlorine, it's over here. Element 17, 17 protons, starts out with 17 electrons, but it wants to gain. Gain electron, non-metals gain, forms an anion. And then now you have to worry about cancel out the charge. A plus one, a minus one, why well, you need one atom of each. And the chemical form is NaCl. Go ahead and try the others. Okay, we already did Na, it's plus. Oxygen, element number eight, how many electrons does it want to gain? Right, it's a non-metal, wants to gain electrons, it wants 10 like neon. That will fill its shell, so it needs to gain two more. Gain two electrons, so now it's a net two minus. Or if you want, you can say it's a minus two. Uh, for some reason, the chemist put the minus sign after. And now, we need to pair up enough oxygen, enough sodium, so that we cancel out the charge. Well, if you just pair up one of each, the net charge is going to be negative one, right? The oxygen's at a negative two, add a plus one, well, minus two plus one equals minus one. Not zero. No, you have to add another sodium in here. So the full formula is going to have two sodiums, so that they add up to a plus two charge, and that will cancel out oxygen's minus two charge. So the chemical formula will be two sodiums and one oxygen. Oh, we, we usually list the metal first in our chemical formulas. The next one, magnesium. What's the charge on magnesium? Well, it has 12 electrons. It would also like to have 10, like neon, so it needs to lose two. And as it kicks out two electrons, that gives it a plus two charge. Oxygen, we already said that's a minus two. And so now, magnesium's plus two matches oxygen's minus two. They cancel out. Chemical formulas, MgO. What's the charge on aluminum? Well, aluminum starts out with 13 electrons. It might be thinking about going up to 18. That would be gaining five. That's a lot. Five electrons more. No, it's a metal, right? It's on the left side of the diagonal, so it's a metal. Metals lose electrons usually. It starts at 13. It can go down to 10 by losing three. So it's easier to lose three electrons than to gain five electrons. So that's what it does. Loses three. Lose three electrons, aluminum. It becomes a plus three cation. And uh-oh, needs to form ionic bonds with oxygen so that the net charge is zero. And there's two ways of doing this. The long way is say, okay, trial and error. If I pair up one of each, what's the net charge? Well, plus three minus two equals plus one. So this collection of two atoms is two positive. We need to make it a little more negative, try and get the zero. So add another oxygen, now it's a charge. Oxygens together are minus four. Oops, three minus four is negative one. Okay, now this collection of three atoms is two negative. Add something positive. Well, my positive charges only come prepackaged as aluminum plus three. That's all I got. So now the total positive charge is plus six. The oxygens are minus four. Oops, that's add, that adds up to plus two. So add something negative, and there we go. Three plus three is six positive. The oxygens add up to six minus, and now everything cancels out. Net charge zero. So the salt or ionic compound between aluminum and oxygen is the compound where there's two aluminums and three oxygens. That's a long way. Shortcut. What you do is it doesn't always work. You need to check. But crisscross. Take the three of aluminum, put it down here for oxygen. Take the two of oxygen, put it down here for aluminum. Al, well, take oxygen's two, and oxygen, take aluminum's three. Now, when it doesn't work, is a case like this. If you crisscross, you get the wrong chemical formula. Crisscrossing, you want to put twos down there. Mg2O2, uh-uh, that's not the formula. 
formula is just MGO. Don't have to crisscross. The, the charges already cancel. Okay, a couple of remarks about ionic compounds. When we name them, we don't new use the prefixes. Mono, di, tri, tetra, because there's only one co combination that will cancel out the charge. There are no compounds of aluminum O2 or aluminum 5O2, whatever. The only combination that cancels the charge is two aluminums, three oxygens. So you don't have to use the prefixes. There's only one compound with aluminum oxide. So just call it that, aluminum oxide. So here's another example. We got Mg, 3, N2. Take a look at the periodic table. Mg is right here, it's magnesium, right? So the ionic compound's name is, take the element name of the first one, the metal, and take the root of the non-metal name. Well, it's nitrogen is N, so just take the nit part and then add the suffix ide, magnesium nitride. What's the chemical formula of cesium phosphide? Well, you always have the periodic table. So look up cesium. Phosphide, well, it sounds like phosphorus. Yep, it is. Phosphorus, the root of phosphorus, phosph, and then ide. So it's P. That's not the chemical formula. Uh-oh. I grabbed an element from the left side of the table and from the right side on the other side of the diagonal. So I got a metal with a non-metal. You have to just be aware that, hey, this is an ionic compound, metal with non-metal. So if it's ionic, they are ions. Somebody's positive, somebody's negative. Now you have to check the charges. What's the charge on cesium? 55 electrons. Nearest noble gas is one with 54 xenon. It wants to lose an electron to become 54 electrons total. So it wants a plus one charge. Lose one electron. What's phosphorus want to do? Well, can okay, put the line through it. That's element number 15. <laughs> It wants 18 like argon. Non-metals gain. Gain electrons. Wants three more. to gain three electrons. It's going to be a three minus. The charges don't cancel. Plus one, minus three don't cancel out. So crisscross. Put the three down there from the cesium. And there's a one here. You only need one phosphorus atom. There's a chemical formula. Because each cesium ion is going to be plus one. The phosphorus is going to be minus three. And together, these four ions can't help the charge. That makes nature happy. All the charges are balanced again. The last thing we need to, need to know about ionic compounds is that when they dissolve in water, they usually form ions, separate ions. So here's a question. How many ions form when magnesium chloride, MgCl2, dissolves in water? In chemical terms, we put a little S subscript, meaning this is a solid. Dump in the water, there's a change where the magnesium and the chlorine are going to separate because this is an ionic compound. It's also called a salt. Ionic compounds are called salts. Magnesium's over here on the left side. Element number 12, it wants to lose two electrons. It's going to be a plus two cation. Chlorine's on the right, wants to gain electrons, one more electron. So inside this salt, magnesium is plus two. Each chlorine is minus one. Oh yeah, you need two of them to balance out the charge. So when they separate, they all separate from each other. The magnesium, it's going to be a cation. It's going to be dissolved in water, and the symbol for that is AQ. One of the chlorines will be Cl minus, AQ, and the second chlorine, same thing, Cl minus, right? These Cl anions can't stick to each other. They're both negative. They repel each other. So they separate from each other. So there's a chemical equation, but we got the same thing showing up twice. So why don't we simplify it? Just put a big two in front of the Cl minus. So you have two of them. Oh, let's answer the question. How many ions form? Three, an Mg cation and two Cl anions.